Hey yeah, in my last video, I talked about using the indirect method to decode this lock. It's a no-named bike lock with five wheels. And see my previous video to see the indirect method. In this video, I might be able to open it faster if I do a more direct method. This is set to zero, so say. I'm going to turn this all the way around, cover it up. Okay, so just a uh, good, good shuffle, and I'm going to turn all this back. Okay, good, good shuffle. Okay, I don't know what the combination is. I'm going to set it all to zeros just in case. Okay, and it doesn't open. Okay, so what the method I'm going to try now, just like in the indirect method, I have to find out which side is binding. When I tension the lock by pulling both ends, if I turn this end, it turns quite easy, but if I turn this end, it's a lot tougher to turn. Um, this side is binding first. Okay, so that was with tension. See my last video, I talk about more of it. And especially when I'm tensioning the lock, I have to pull along. These two bits go down and it's tempting to just um, pull, pull it in an angle. And that won't actually pull the lock along. It won't tension the lock properly. And you won't get the feedback you need to be able to decode this lock if you don't pull it along to tension it. Okay, so I'm going to pull along and as if I'm trying to open it and it's putting constant tension on it and I'm going to start turning this lock one by one. It's a little bit hard to turn. Okay, it's sort of lurched into seven, sort of got suddenly a little bit easier to turn into seven and it doesn't want to come out of seven very easily. So I'm going to go to the next wheel. Okay, so tension it and make sure I'm pulling along. Make sure I'm pulling along. Okay, um, not only did it lurch in that number, there was a slight click, so I'm liking nine. Okay, so it's quite tiring putting this amount of tension on this lock. Okay, so I'm gonna Go to the third wheel and I'm pulling. Okay, same thing, it lurched in there uh, with a little bit of a click and uh, it doesn't seem to want to come out of that number when I'm turning it, when I have tension on it. Okay, so have a bit of a rest. <sighs> okay, now I'm gonna pull again, both sides of the lock. Was that seven? One? No, I think it was seven. Okay, I, I think that's seven. It, it seems to lurch and it seems to not want to come out as easily, although it still comes out. These numbers, they didn't want to come out, but this one, um, it sort of doesn't want to come out, but it comes out easier. I'm going to keep it on seven. I can always come back to this wheel after I do the last wheel. Okay, so I'm going to pull both sides. Oh, and it opens. So, okay, seven was correct. <laughs> okay, so this is a faster method to open this lock, faster than my previous video, which talked about the indirect method. This method, this direct method, trying to find the... Uh, the, these lurches, these gates, the, these stuck positions. It's harder to do and it only works on some bike locks and I'm lucky this one didn't have any false gates. The indirect method works on many more bike locks but this method, when it does work, it can work a lot faster. Thanks.